Thanks everyone uh, for coming, especially since it's the last day. And uh, I think the second last talk here, so really appreciate that you know, like you guys are here to learn a little bit more about platform events and how we can, how we can think about our architecture um, with that new tool, platform events, that you know, like we have now. And um, so my name is Florian Hoon. I'm, I'm German. I work for Mavens as a technical architect. Uh, I work and live in Northern Ireland now. And uh, I really started to work on the force.com platform in 2008, 2009. And yeah, really, Salesforce has come a long, long way since then. And you can really say that the journey for Salesforce.com and for me have been similar, that uh, we've come along and, and started with a CRM tool, with a CRM application, and really have transformed now to work on an enterprise level and to work in a different style, to work with different architectures and just a different type of thinking about how we approach um, projects and how we approach, you know, like to think about the application that we are building. So my first exposure to Salesforce was web to lead Yeah, so it was here. This is the Salesforce platform. It's new. It's, we, have, we use it as a CRM tool. Uh, can you build us this web to lead thing, feature that we want? And uh, this was the actual process that we designed. So we have the web to lead, we create a lead, uh, depending on the location, we do some automated vetting in, in custom code and then um, the lead conversion comes in and we can you know, create our opportunity and account. And so this is really how everything started, right? Before Salesforce was a platform, it was a CRM application. And so a lot of customers started out with Salesforce as CRM too. And then, you know, we realized, oh, you can do a lot of stuff on Salesforce. You can do it really quickly. You can do it, um, you know, like really with a click and point approach as well. So we added an order management system. And I think this is kind of a typical, you know, like a typical history of using Salesforce is, so we start out with a little bit, uh, we adding features, and then we realizing with our order management system, we have to make sure that you know, our, our client data is up to date, so we need to integrate with our master data management system. Um, we actually want to trigger our shipment from our order management, so we have to include that as well. We want to make sure that we are paid before we send out, um, you know, like before we send out the shipment. And um, so more and more features were added on to our platform and to our system architecture that is ar sits around our platform. And then, this is still simple enough, but uh, we were adding more. We were adding more features. And with every feature, you know, our system archite architecture grew and grew and grew. And so, really, you know, the, to be honest, I assumed the, this wouldn't be readable anymore. Otherwise, I would have added some more. <laughs> but the screen is pretty big. So uh, that's, that approach is just not scalable. Yeah. We are adding more and more features, and our architecture blows up, and now nobody understands everything anymore. Nobody understands the whole system. And uh, it's very difficult to onboard someone, for example. So if you have a junior developer coming in, then how do you explain everything at once? But there are so many dependencies that there's no other way to do it. And so how can platform events help us with that? And uh, so a platform event will look very familiar to all of you. It's, it's basically just uh, an S object, or it looks and feels like an S object when you create it. And um, the, the one really important distinction is, is it's uh, immutable, which means you can't edit it once it's created. And it's, whenever it is created, it's put on the event bus, and then uh, it has a chronological order on there. So as well, you can't change the ordering. And that gets really important whenever you want to replay events and, and all the other features that platform events really comes with. And the main thing that it enables us to do is it enables us to think about um, software architecture in, the, in an event-driven architecture approach, which you can see here. So in an event-driven architecture, you have the event producers, 
um, which are really systems or modules that uh, push an event, that publish an event. And then you have the event bus, as I mentioned already, and the event consumers who are subscribing to an event. And whenever that event gets fired, um, you know, like they get the information that, are, that is inside that event. And so how does it really look in, in Apex or so on, on, on our platform? We have different event producers, so we have different capabilities to produce an event um, on the Forsacom platform. The first one we can use processes, flows, uh, Apex, and also the API. And so really, you know, like you can do it in a declarative way, so also admins can create an event, um, but you can also do more complex um, custom code around creating an event and, and logic that creates that event. And then what are the, the uh, consumers, the event consumers, is also the processes, flows, they can react to the uh, event creation, Apex of course, and then uh, for the API we have Comet D which we can use so it's a similar way um, that the streaming API works. So we already know the tooling that we will be using around platform events. So that's quite cool that we don't have to you know, really learn, we have to learn how to think about them, but we don't really have to learn the tools that, you know, like how we work with them. And so now let's look at our architecture and pick out uh, our order management system. So in our order management system, we want to we wanna basically rip out everything that's not order management. Yeah? We want to create a module order management which has no, or which has nothing in there, no dependencies in there to any of our other um, modules, any of our other business processes. So <coughs> if we rip out the web to lead stuff in there, then we get a nice, um, you know, like a nice little architecture for our module. So we're really looking at uh, order management as, a, as one piece. And then what, what is the actual item that we really want to, or the, the event that we want to create when, you know, like when in our order management system that needs to interact with, a, with our whole system architecture and our whole, um, you know, like, company system architecture. We have this create order event, for example. So here, uh, our order management module publishes a create order event. So whenever an order is created and everything, um, you know, like all the data is there for that order, we are publishing a create order event. And now we push that create order event to the event bus. And then the order management module doesn't care anymore. It doesn't matter, you know, like who is subscribing to the create order event. For the order management module, it really doesn't matter. And that's how we really, you know, like separate our logic. Yeah? And um, in, these, in this event, in this order management, uh, or create order event, um, we can put data in there. So we can, if, you know, like we only want the, the order number, then we only put the order number in there. If we need more information um, to our systems that are subscribing to this event, that we can put more information in there. And that really works very similar way to uh, an S object. So there's no dependencies anymore. And um, so when we think of platform event use cases, I think the first use case that kind of comes up and um, when you think about it and when you really dig into it is um, an integration use case. So our order management module, which sits on our salesforce.com platform, publishes the create order event, it goes into the, uh, onto the event bus, and now several other external systems can subscribe to this event and can react to it. So our shipping management tool um, runs on Heroku and it just reacts to that event being published. And then, for example, the consumer application, an iOS application, uh, can set out a notification, order accepted. You know, like we have created your order and um, you know, like it's going well and will an estimated delivery date is then and then. So you really, um, and, and those, two, those two tools don't need to know about each other. Those two tools don't need to know anything about the order management. They also, uh, they only need to know about that one event and the, def the definition of that event and um, react to it whenever it gets published. But then there's more to platform events and to use cases for platform events than just that integration use case. I think it will be the first one that we are using, really. But we can also, or 
it gives us way more flexibility. So we can um, publish the create order event on from a module on the Force.com platform, but we can also subscribe to it from a module on the Force.com platform, which really means that you know we don't only separate the concerns from our platform to external applications, but also inside our platform, we really can create different modules that can communicate via events. And then, of course, external um, systems can also publish events because we can create events via the API. So that's really powerful as well. And then our internal systems can react to that, uh, or internal modules. So here, for example, you have a, um, a reporting data uh, module which also reacts to the create order because it does need to do some calculations and then create a really nice dashboard um, for the CEO, for example. And then what would be the next steps? And we have already, um, there has been some stuff announced uh, at Dreamforce here that really leads me to believe that Salesforce is pushing this type of architecture uh, in the future. So I asked myself, what, what if we could react to standard events? And um, so in, in, my, in my mind, it was events like you know, a closed opportunity, a close, closing a case, um, but now Salesforce will, will give us the, I think it will be in pilot or is in pilot now, um, this, this change data capture uh, event. So we, I think at the moment it's for the standard objects, we can react to the changes there. And that's really, really powerful because we can, we can react to standard changes. And we, these changes don't need to be made by one of our modules and one of our custom modules, but they are triggered by the you know, by the platform itself. And then if that thinking goes on and on, then you could have an event source platform. And that would mean that we are not looking at the application state as our, as our history and as our, you know, like a uh, source of truth, but we are looking at the actual event log at our source of truth. And uh, one, like one event sourced system that most of you probably know is Git. So in Git, you have the commit history, and if you replay the commit history, then you know you you get the application state, and that's really if we could get to that, that would be uh, I think it would be very very powerful for all of us, um, and we could you could really work and, and change history and, and you know like make sure that if you have something that um, like a, a, a payroll is a good example. If you have a payroll and there was a mistake six months ago, you could actually you know, like with an event to a system, you can go back and you can make this one change or an extra event to, to make a change, to correct the, the mistake, and then you replay all events to get to the current state. So that's a, a very powerful uh, dream of the future. So how does our new system architecture uh, look when we, you know, like when we have this separation of concern? So we can have our different modules and all just interact with the event bus. So our order management module, our CM module, they're on the, same, on the same platform, but they don't really care about each other because they are communicating via the event bus and via events and publishing and subscribing to these events. So, well, what do we do now? We know where we want to go, we know where we are, but we can't really change that quickly, right? So this is our reality and probably way more complex. And this is our goal. So how, like what can we do to do a first step to, to get to that goal? And so in this example, well, create that order management module. Just refactor this one module and make sure that your big platform is communicating to that module only via events. And then when you have that, you can look at the second one or the third one, or you can, if you have a new feature, a new, um, you know, like module coming up, then you can just, you know, start doing that on its own, only communicating via platform events. And that really plays well with Salesforce DX because Salesforce DX wants to push us to to use modules and to do, uh, you know, like to have the order management module and then let the order management module go through a deployment process and let the CRM module go through a deployment process and a developing process. And that also means that in the future you can actually, if you onboard someone, 
and then you give them the order management tool, you know, every developer will, you know, it's a couple of classes probably, a couple of S objects. There's no problem. Uh, after a week, every developer will be an expert for the order management tool. And that way you can really, you know, leverage, I think, leverage developers way earlier in the process of, of coming on board. And it won't be as complicated um, for developers or the, the gap of knowledge won't be as big because your modules are small so they can go step by step and really be an expert and own a certain modules. Yeah, so important here is really that you go step by step and that you don't just refactor everything because we've got this new shiny tool. Uh, really go step by step and you will also, I mean, it's a new tool, so we have to learn how to use it. We have to learn how to think about it and then really apply that knowledge to, to our architecture. And it might not work for everything. Yeah? Not all the modules uh, might be able to communicate solely, uh, only via the platform events with each other. So we might have you know, one, two, three modules that communicate to the rest, but they are tightly coupled. And that makes sense, and that's you know, maintainable for us, and that's how we want it. So we really have to make sure that we learn more and go step by step uh, in the process of really learning how to do event-driven architecture on the platform. Um, yeah, thank you everyone that uh, you, you were here and, and listened to me talking about event-driven architecture. If uh, you want, I'll be you know, just, just down here for any questions or, or discussions uh, around this, around the platform, or uh, basketball. That always works for me. And um, I, I put my slides up on, on GitHub, and you can follow me, of course, as well. And the, the trailhead for platform events is uh, it's pretty good just to get your hands dirty and to actually create a couple of them and see uh, how it all works and feels. So thanks.